Anthony Lowenstein is an independent journalist and the author of The Palestine Laboratory. That's a book on Israel's arms and surveillance, surveillance industry. And he's joining us live from Sydney. Thank you very much for your time. You have worked on this issue for years. Israel says it's targeting hospitals because Hamas operates from them. It's never provided proof. Given the incredibly high civilian death toll from their bombing of Gaza, more than 11,000 people, more than 4,600 children, can Israel continue to use this reason to bomb civilian infrastructure, such as hospitals? They're able to do it because there's complete global impunity. I mean, the reason Israel has been doing this in Gaza since October 7, and frankly, there's a long history in Palestine of Israel deliberately targeting medical facilities in the West Bank, East Jerusalem and Gaza. Obviously, the scale of this is fairly unprecedented, but in some ways... We should be shocked, but not surprised. I mean, think about the key patron of Israel, the US. The US has spent decades in Iraq and Afghanistan deliberately targeting medical facilities. I think about Fallujah in 2003 and 4, or the MSF hospital in Afghanistan in 2015, and where the US deliberately targets facilities, denies doing so. And we've seen in the last month huge amounts of Palestinian medical facilities, patients dying, literally being shot at inside the hospital. So any claims of the IDF need to be always treated with deep, deep scepticism. And it's sad that so many other journalists yeah. in mainstream media often do not do that, despite the history. And the latest claim, Israel is saying that its forces are carrying out the operation um, including medical teams and Arabic speakers, and that the operation is based on intelligence information and an operational necessity. This is the latest that we're hearing from Israel. Again, this is something that we have heard for many years, that all of these operations are based on intelligence, and it's continuing to receive support, as you mentioned, from the US. The US government has come out and said they have their own intelligence that Hamas uses these facilities as command centres. Again, they haven't provided any evidence either. No evidence. And I think it's worth noting that this is really as much of an information war as it is about a military yeah. conflict, that Israel and the US is well aware that huge amounts of the world are deeply against what Israel is doing, have been protesting unprecedented numbers, the largest public protest since the Iraq war protests in 2002 and three across the globe. So they're really trying to put out a message that what Israel's doing legitimate. And what's also so not mystifying, but infuriating is that it's pretty clear that so much of what Israel is doing in Gaza is breaching international law. So while that's happening, there was a Bloomberg report in the last 24 hours that details in depth that Israel is, sorry, the US is rushing huge amounts of more weapons that had not been documented before to Israel. So on the one hand, you have the US saying privately to mainstream journalists, we're issuing caution to Israel. But yeah. the fact is, listen to what, no, not, no don't, don't ignore what they're saying, watch what they're doing. And what they're doing is sending more weapons to Israel to fight its brutal war in Gaza. And you talk about the messaging from the US. Do you think that the, you know, the latest that we've heard from the national security spokesman, is it mixed messaging? Because after saying that they have their own evidence that Hamas is using hospitals and healthcare facilities, that Israel cannot bomb them because, well, they say that it's not, you know, they, Hamas is using them, but you can't use airstrikes. I mean, we're sort of, I mean, it's almost like words fail. I mean, essentially, the US is the key enabler, has been for years. And when you have Joe Biden or Anthony Blinken or John Kirby talking about, we're concerned about Palestinian civilians, most of the world laughs grimly and says, sorry, after over 11,000 civilians, the vast majority of whom uh, have nothing to do with conflict and nothing to do with Hamas. I have friends of mine in Gaza who I'm in touch with when I can, thankfully still alive, whose homes have been bombed, who have no connection to Hamas, and they're living in essentially refugees in their own territory. So when we talk about targeting medical facilities deliberately, which essentially is what Israel is doing, despite anything the IDF says or the US is backing them in saying so, we should be deeply not just concerned, but mm -hmm. I think it's also just finally worth saying that there is growing global opposition to the Western arms companies that are backing this. This is not just a government issue, it's a defence company issue. So you have public protests against, um, for example, uh, American, British and Israeli arms companies across the globe. In other words, understand 
where there's a supply chain here of weapons that are being directly funneled from Western nations to Israel in its war against Gaza. And is that part of the reason, Mr Lowenstein, for America's continued support of Israel? Can you explain, you know, to our international audience um, why it stands so steadfast with Israel as it's accused for decades, not just of its illegal operation, that's not an accusation, but of committing mm. war crimes while carrying out its op occupation? I think there's a range of reasons. I think the U.S. defence industry is part of that because so many of the weapons that Israel gets in the U.S. are made by American defence companies and that's assisting, so they think, Congress, men and women across the U.S. I think definitely the Israel lobby, APAC and others, were incredibly influential and powerful, funding anyone who dares um, praise Israel, but anyone who's critical essentially is attempted to be beaten out of Congress. I mean, it's pretty remarkable after more than a month you can pretty much count on two hands how many American congressmen and women are even calling for a ceasefire. Forget about anything more serious than that. You can't even find more than 10 American politicians that are calling for something more serious. What comes the day after? And I think also there's domestic political concerns that elements of the pro-Israel community, the Jewish community, and I'm Jewish myself, who have been deeply critical for years that so much of the Jewish establishment in the US, Australia and Europe has enabled the worst behaviour of Israel. Even though there's Jewish dissent and it's growing, and I'm really amazed by that in the last month and years, but there's domestic concerns here that Biden, despite the fact that politically he is deeply in trouble, that many Arab Americans, for example, Muslim Americans, are saying, we will not, we will not vote for Biden in 2024. So he's doing that despite that. And one could say that's based on principle. It has nothing to do with principle. It's about the fact that Palestinians, for so many American elites, are not equal people. They're not given the same rights as Israeli Jews. That's the sad, brutal reality where you have in the last month Democrats and Republicans, many of them, openly suggesting that Palestinians, not Hamas, all Palestinians in Gaza are akin to Nazis. I mean, just ludicrous kind of rhetoric. And that obviously contributes to an yeah. atmosphere of mad pro-Israel boosterism. And it's so dangerous for the global community, including for Jews, because Israeli actions are making Jews more unsafe, yeah. not less. Mr Lowenstein, it's great to get your analysis, your insights on the story. We really appreciate it. That is independent journalist and author Anthony Thank Lowenstein you. joining us live from Sydney. Thank you so much. We're going